we're getting ready to uh, finish up Bill's bike here. And when we were working on it, one of the things we noticed that the wheel weights were missing, but we could see the old witness mark of where the adhesive was. So we had some idea that it wasn't like it wasn't ever balanced. It's that something probably came up and knocked these off. So we're gonna do a real quick lesson here to think about where people get into trouble installing wheel weights. Let's look at a couple sets here. Right now, because we got an auto store down the road, it was really convenient to grab these, but I hate them. And the reason I hate them is compared to my favorite little ones, k &L. And if Nancy, if you're watching at k l Supply, hello. Hope you're having a great day out there in California. We're jealous of your weather. And uh, these are narrower. So what you can see, can you guys see if you get over the shoulder here or whatnot? Absolutely. This, this is significantly wider. So let's look at why that's a problem. And the challenge that we have with this Harley wheel is there's no place to clamp any weights in the middle. There's literally no flat edges on this. This rounds over right away and this rounds over right away. So if you look at this automotive style that we have, can you see the big lip that's hanging out there? Well, what's something going to do when it comes off the road? Peel them off? It's just going to lift that thing off. It's going to take the wheel weights off. Let's go to these narrower ones. That sure is going to give us a lot better fitment, isn't it? Mm, yes. Okay. Well, the problem that we have is this wheel is already back in place. It's on, and we want to use a realistic approach here of the real world to say, hey, these aren't available. I've, I've ran into times where you just plain ran out of these. You know, shop wasn't paying attention, and you got to move forward on there. I can't make the customer wait to get wheel weights in, so it's, it's common we run to our auto parts store. But everybody agree that that fits a lot better, though? Yep. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do a wheel, and let's say we know that this was balanced, there was no issue, and let's say they just peeled off going down the road. From the old witness mark of the adhesive, and just use some tire chalk to give us an idea where we were. Now I can go ahead and take that off. What I need to do is I need to clean this adhesive off spotless. Notice I didn't spray the wheel, notice I sprayed a rag. Why did you spray the rag, not the wheel, Shane? That's a really good question. You think the Facebook world and YouTube wants to know? Yep. Why don't you answer it? Uh, carb cleaner and brake cleaner can peel paint off your wheels. Yeah, that wouldn't be good, would it? No. Here's one of the big problems is people don't get that old adhesive off and then you're gonna end up having it to where it really doesn't wanna stick. Can you see where we're gonna be pulling off a piece of double-sided tape? Yep. Here's the other problem that we run into. So we're gonna go ahead and just use the ones we actually intend to use is that when I start working, I've only touched this for like a couple of seconds here and I'm starting to get dirty. If that is on my fingers and I start to mess with the tape, I want you to think about this. This is all about the adhesion surface here. If I, in, in the contact of this, if I get thumbprints on these two sides, would you agree that it won't stick? Yep. Well, if that lifts, so let's say this is the part that doesn't have that good contact and it starts to lift, that's just gonna end up allowing the whole thing to peel off. So is it a problem? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so what we're gonna do here is we got this good and clean, and for right now I'm gonna be very intentional not to get any monkey prints on the side of that. And I'm just being careful how I install this. Okay. Wanna really get that good and down. So can you see the tape? I can. Oh yeah. Not good, right? So in our save the day, what we're going to do is we're going to clean this outside surface even further. And I want you to think about this. This is a, can you show the bike? We got ourselves a Harley Davidson. It's a touring model. This, nobody could see this wheel. So we're not really worried about cosmetic value in this point. Any of you guys that are road racers out there, you know that you're going to, it's a, it's a rule in most rule books that you have to actually duct tape your wheel weights in place so this is common practice for us now I've been monkeying this up right mm -hmm. okay I'm getting my fingerprints on there I'm gonna go ahead here make it a little bit long I'm gonna focus on just getting in the middle here where I really want to get it really good and on there now say Bill doesn't like this duct tape he says man I don't want duct tape on my motorcycle isn't this just a temporary thing so that we can get the wheel weights that we really wish to have? Yep. Yeah. On my personal motorcycles, I duct tape them anyway, but maybe that comes from, you know, the track bikes, and I just think it's such a good practice. Let's summarize this. You guys, you gotta think about the fact that 
don't take this little stuff for granted. We're, we're talking about the fact that we're working at really dirty conditions. You take a quick second and go wash my hands. You gotta remember, if I'm at this point, probably the next thing I'm gonna do is wanna get the bike off the lift. I'm gonna wanna go take it for a test ride. I don't wanna be doing that with nasty, dirty hands anyway. So if you actually plan at what point you're gonna stop and take a break, to not cause some other problem. That's what we're doing. We're doing motorcycle mechanics with intention, right? Yep. All right, guys, make it a great day out there in the YouTube, Facebook world, and thanks for tuning in, and... Keep wrenching. All right.